Welcome Flip Clock fans. Today we're doing a, uh, a restoration on a Sony 8RC-25 flip clock, or as they were known back in the day, a digital clock. Uh, it is an AM only clock. It's, a early, it's an early Sony. And it's got an alarm wake to radio or buzzer. It's got a pull to sleep selector, which will allow you to sleep to the radio until that goes down. Then that's on and off for the radio. The radio does come in better than that. We've got storms in the area. This tunes your, tunes your uh, AM dial. Got some earphones. This clock is in need of some cleaning, some TLC, and three lights are missing on the clock. One for the alarm selector, one for the clock itself, and then one for the uh, radio dial. So we're going to get into the clock. We'll do a little bit of a instruction on how to disassemble and um, get that moth out of here and see how things are going. Alright, so. disassemble begins here where we're going to remove, there's four screws, two in the front here which are longer screws than the two in the back and then we'll go ahead and remove the two motor uh, or the clock mechanism screws. We've moved the screws. Um, like I said, there's two small ones for the back and the two clock mechanism mount screws and there's two washers that go with that. Um, starting to think that you can tell the clock's a little more vintage by whether they use washers or not. They gave up on washers later. Um, the clock's definitely needed some cleaning. Now, to disassemble, we're going to pull straight out here, remove that. Another sign of a older clock is that they use like a metal band around that to help hold that in. It's almost just like a spring. And then this pulls straight out. Straight out here. This one's an exception here. You don't pull that straight out. You're going to break something if you do. You can, we're going to unscrew it to the left. So that's that. You just lift, lift up and tilt to the side there to get away from the post there. Now what we just saw was the two parts here dropped out. The um, front piece which is plastic and it's a soft plastic because it's got some scratches on it. And then the back part little lens here. This thing I believe directs the light bulb and we can see our little whirly gig moving around there. It's not a shielded motor as in a lot of the other clocks we'll see. Now we're going to see that we have a light bulb here with a metal base that's illuminating inside this wheel. The wheel is green plastic so it's going to glow green, we know that. We now have another light here that looks like painted a painted bulb. It's green. And then here we have this bulb here. Now this is going to be the neon orange glow. I had to do some research to find that out and someone just just dropped a mention of the orange light on this clock in an old eBay listing. I got a schematic and looked and this is listed as a uh, neon bulb and back in those days it was an uh, orange glow. So it's an orange and green uh, look to the clock. So we've got your AM antenna back here. The clock's got a lot of heft to it. There's a lot of metal components here. We've got the um, transformer here, the switches, metal here. It's heavy, it's especially on the right side of the clock. So we've got three lights out. We're going to remove all these components here and give it a good cleaning and see if we can't fix those lights. All right, we're right in the process of some disassembly and I'm removing these components here. And um, so to help me recall and anyone else who's doing this, we've got we've got a screw that comes out here and then we've got one that comes out there now those screws they look they look like um, how to say this, they're more, they're more like uh, wood screws they're, they're plastic screws the screws go into plastic okay there's a longer one the longer one goes here and a shorter one goes here so if you find a short one it goes here then there's two more that are the longer variety, one there and one here. These two screws that hold this transformer thing down 
are more like machine screws. And um, so they're more like they're like more like a machine screw that go there. And also need to be aware that there is a um, like a grounding washer here that right there that's going to go underneath or on top of that machine screw there. Okay, so on the bottom of the clock where the volume is, and we removed the volume button, you can see it's pretty filthy under there, so we're going to clean all that up. But there's a little tiny uh, flathead screw that actually goes into there and works the volume here. So that actually has to come off before this part of the mechanism is loose. So I think we're ready to start gently taking this stuff off here. We're going to have to take the screw screws off for the speaker. We're going to have to take screws off here, probably with the smaller screwdriver to get the antenna off and then I think we might be able to get this disassembled now. Here you're looking at the earphone plug which is going to have to come off to, for a complete disassembly. Now there's a ring around here. There's probably a tool for this but that's got to unscrew like that. Now of course I've already loosened it and making it look easier than it's going to be. It's going to be pretty tight. Somebody really secured that down. So you could use a small flat head to kind of go here and push. Don't don't try to pry off anything else. It doesn't want to come off very easily. So be careful with that. Take your time. So I'm going to take that off and then move on down the road here. Alright, what had to happen with the uh, earphone selector is I had to press that out fairly firmly. It didn't act like it wanted to come out, but it did. The components, I, gen I gently pulled the components this way away from the base. It took my time, it, and it was a somewhat sticky. There was nothing holding it. It's just a little sticky um, from the years there. So um, I, I do have, there's two more things here we've got to take care of here. Um, we've got to remove this antenna, the brown bar looking thing here. Um, we have to remove the speaker. Whoa. That was loose. Some. Oh. We've got a, sorry about the camera work here, looks like there was an attempt at a repair here, possibly in shop, huh, so you can see where someone, that was loose and someone tried to repair that, well we'll repair that better, and uh, well there, that has to be removed, that's the selector switch for the alarm or buzzer, those two screws will have to be removed there. Okay, on we go. Okay, you're looking at the neon glow bulb that we have to replace. And it wouldn't surprise me one bit if this is asbestos on here. And you gotta, you got to pry that back. You could cut it off and replace it with something modern, but I always like to try to keep it original. And the, if the tubing actually does, it's a high heat um, PVC tubing. It's 105 degrees Celsius tubing right here over top of the resistor. You can see the resistor in there. It's another small piece of that fiber that just um, where the soldering was done here on this lead here, but I'm going to have to work it to get the uh, the tubing off here. I want to try to reuse that tubing. And I do have a neon glow bulb to replace that. Um, so I just wanted to show that. That does take a little bit of work to get off. You could cut it. You could go with it. This is 120 volts, so it does come off straight off the main um, so that's 120 volt. These are, uh, now I'm thinking, I was trying to read the schematic. I'm not a bona fide electrician here, or even a halfway electrician, but uh, this is after it's gone through the uh, transformer there, and these are probably seven some volt bulbs here, and then on the other side here, which I think is a, I believe is a green, a green painted bulb. Musical. Okay, you're seeing me trying to figure it out on live here. I didn't know what I was doing here. Okay. It's wrapped with a uh, PVC uh, heat protective shield as well. Um, so you got the green bulb here. And we're going to have to replace that bulb. Uh, you're not, I highly doubt I'm going to be able to find anything like that. I've got something comparable with a metal base. And we're going to have to get a glass paint to paint that bulb I believe. I uh, do not think I'm going to find that if I want to keep it original. Okay so there we are. That's probably as far down as I'm going to show you on the disassembly. Um, 
just if in case you're wondering, the clock is pretty filthy on the inside. We've got cobwebs, dust bunnies, little bitty cobwebs in there. So um, it was, it, it does definitely need a cleaning. The numbers, um, while they look okay on the outside, when you get in here, you're, you can see some some garbage here. Um, we're gonna get these numbers cleaned, and generally, I use as pure alcohol, as appropriate alcohol as I can get. I want to wipe down the the uh, dial here, clean that up, um, and that's probably where I'm going to go. I'll probably do a complete wipe down of all of all the components that I can do safely without messing anything up to get that uh, new clock smell back. So, with the the cabinet and such, we're going to be using um, we're going to be using just good old fashioned soap and water. I will tell you, I have come to believe that this, the um, paint which on these things which is going to make it hard to try to polish that or clean that aggressively. But the paint is sort of a chromish type paint. I would not use ammonia on that. I have uh, used ammonia on various clocks before and I think it's what fades my, my stripes. So the stripe is somewhat faded already, but not bad. So we're going to clean that really good keep the ammonia away from it this time around and uh, try to protect this before I break it before it gets back on the clock everything's in good shape like I said only very minor damage on the clock and it did look like somebody tried to repair it here back before the days of nice uh, plastic epoxy and what they used again I don't know if that's in shop job or, or whatever but I think that's going to repair very well here so all right, so there we go. That's probably it for the uh, disassembly of this clock. Uh, we'll do a review of it later. i uh, show you how it turned out with the new bolts. So, well, thanks for, thanks for watching, and come visit us at Flip Clock Fans.